Yeah. All right, and we're live. This is uh, Ushin O'Gallion sitting in front of me on a laptop screen. We are probably about 4,000 miles away from each other, or oh, thereabouts, right. at least 3,000. Ushin, mm -hmm. where are you right now? Where am I? I'm sitting in Alba Fay, County Donegal. I just got back from a race in Dublin, so here we are. So a bit of traveling, and how, how was the race for you? Did, you? did you do well? I did all right. It was part of the National League, so I run for Fun Valley here during the summer. And we got enough points. I think we stayed in the Premier Division this year, so I just done my part for the club. So you're being, you're being roped in. You're on your holidays, but you're, uh, there's no so, rest. Uh, no rest for the wicked is right. <laughs> okay, good stuff. So the reason I'm talking to you today is you are... Uh, I think it's fair to say an elite athlete in the American college uh, system, which for many people in Ireland is something very, very foreign. And my goal here, and I think you might be able to help me, is to to basically tell people about wh what's it all about, mm -hmm. uh, what's good, what's bad, all that. I have a load of questions for you here. Firstly, I really, I'm very, very grateful for you doing this. I know it's about uh, quarter past ten at night at home, but, but I no hope, uh, I hope people can learn from you, and and many others because there's a lot to be said. So um, mm -hmm. again, I'm grateful for you for you doing this. No uh, problem at all, Fergus. I'm out on a Sunday evening. Um, uh -huh. So we, we'll, we'll start from the start. Well, one beginning. How how did we meet? The two. <laughs> Well, I believe it was in the deep south. It was down around Atlanta, Georgia at the time. And there was a, we had a flight to Boston. Well, I had a flight to Boston. So did I. And yes, you did too. And then that was canceled all of a sudden because there was bad snow that year. And so I was like, okay, right, I need to get on the next flight. And that's when I met you and I heard the accent. <laughs> and I was like, just this boy's Irish here. He's in the same flight as me. We could, we need a, Put our brains together here and see Absolutely. what we can do. Yeah. So, pull the resources. Well, we got it. We got managed. What did you say? Pull, pull the resources together. Exactly. I, we we've done everything we could. But yeah. Then we got another flight to London, and sure, all the flights were grounded there as well. So we, that's where we went their separate ways. But mm. it was just the just the start of something. <laughs> no, it was amazing. And <laughs> and I must say, um, I've said to many people that that you got me home because I I was clueless. It was my first time away, and uh, and you you were there. You had a bit more experience. So <laughs> uh, I've lots to thank you for. Tell, for, tell me about yeah. your um your upbringing in Donegal and and your uh, obviously sports was a big part of your life, but. But what was it like in, in Bally Buffet? It's clearly a long way from, from Tennessee mm -hmm. and Alabama, which is where you've spent some time. So wh what's, what was that like for you growing up? Well, growing up, I'd done a range of sports. I get on soccer, boxing, Gaelic, the works, you know, just as a normal Irish boy, you know, growing up. And when I got to 16, I was thinking then I was looking between Gaelic and athletics. And that was a really big decision for me because... I could have went on, hopefully, and played for Donegal, but then had this different opportunity that I didn't really know what to expect because not a lot of people have done it before, and I hadn't heard much from it. So I was out running one time over at my club here. It's just over the bridge, and I was out running with this fella, and he's a bit older. He'd be about in his 50s or 60s, but he was still right. running away, and he was just telling me that I was telling him, as I'm saying to you now, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. Mm. And he says, well... When I was your age, I was running about the same times as yourself, and I had an opportunity to go to America, and I never yeah. did. I never took it. And he says, to this day, that's the biggest regret of his life. Wow. And now that man has stopped running, and I'm still here, and so was everyone else. But mm. just from that one conversation, it honestly made me think, right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go for this. This is it. That, at, that, at that time, there was one other boy from my club in the States. Okay. And so I just messaged him and like, here, what the hell do I need to do? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So how was that process then? That getting over, getting from from A to B. <laughs> Extremely long. Yeah. It took me. It took me a lot of years. Um, I started off and I realized fairly soon or fairly quickly that I was not to the standard I needed to be. Okay. And that kind of spurred me on. And at that stage, I was just about the next year. I was doing my lead cert, so everything was just hitting me like a train at the mm. one time. Yeah. So I done my leaving cert, done all right with that. My times still weren't good enough. The like, okay. colleges weren't looking at me. 
and I expected them to be banging down my door, which they don't. You need to go get them. So yeah. I done took a year out, done a PLC in my town here, just done one year course, mm. and I had got into DCU. Okay. So I went then to DCU the next year because I still didn't have the times. I still wasn't there. And then one day I says, "Here, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go for it. I'm gonna go on my own. I've relied on other coaches to get back to me, but now it's my turn to get after them." So I joined a recruiting company. And they put me in the right places and I got my foot in the door and that's all I wanted. Where you say to people in Ireland, oh, I transferred and it seems like, oh, you're starting all over. You're not mm-hmm. because no. the, the credits transfer over. But it's still, you need a, a good reason to transfer, you know, you wouldn't mm-hmm. do it on a whim. So uh, I suppose to, to be to be brute, to be frank about it, what went wrong in West Alabama? Um, to be honest, it was... Just you, just imagine this is my first time in America and I fly into Birmingham, Alabama and I picked up that internationals program and they take me to this small rural town and like I've seen like movies of New York and like California and all this here and then there's me and there's like nobody around, there's nothing but fields yeah. and I'm thinking what have I got myself into so I move into the house with teammates and the house is <laughs> It's not nice at all. Some first week in there, like this has been a total waste of my time. Like this is awful. Wow. But I got used to it. Got um, first year was all about transitioning. I didn't run the times I expected to. I wanted to, but the coaches had faith in me, mm. and they kept me on. They're like, yeah, "We know you're gonna, you're gonna do something. You know, we just need to hold on." And that's my my whole career has just been steady progression and just adapting to new things. So then I spent my second year there. As a sophomore, and so my time really came down. To some extent, clearly. It couldn't have been that bad. Yes. Kind of thing. No, it wasn't too bad. Like, with your teammates around you, and you have to make the best of every situation you're in. Mm-hmm. I knew that I was lucky to get there in the first place. And although it mightn't have been the biggest school in the world, I was there. I was in the system. I was taking part. And I can only get better from here. That was my thinking. Okay. So, it was like, it was, it was almost like, Go out and kill or be killed. Like you had to really step up your game over there because you go there and you're nobody. Mm. Um, so yeah. then after two years, my times had really improved and I thought, right, this time for the next step. And that was a division two school I was at. So next step, this is, has to be division one. Yeah. So I got in contact with that one fella that was in my club that we used to be in the States. Yeah. I got in contact with him. I was like, here, who do you know? What do you know? I need to go somewhere. And he'd done a lot for me. And got me in touch with a uh, coach in Tennessee, Martin, mm. who's also Irish. And oh, no way. I just went from there. Mm-hmm. It's amazing that the Irish look after each other in America. In I'm America, telling you, they definitely America. do. Uh, can you tell me a bit about your athletic uh, CV or resume, they call it over here? Mm-hmm. And how serious are you? Because uh, you know yourself, there's Division One, there's Division Two, and then the, the best in the world go to the Olympics or whatever. I, I've no. Mm-hmm. I have no uh, idea how how good are you in let's say Olympic terms? Like, are you is that what you're looking at or or what? Um, see, it's all about standards. So it's all about times are set by your country, mm. and if you want to go to a certain event, you have to hit these standards. So you have junior levels like under twenties, under twenty threes, and seniors. So they obviously get progressively harder. Yeah. So right now I'm under twenty three. So if you take where I am now. To get to Europeans, which are happening in a few weeks, I need to run three minutes and 46 seconds flat for a 1500 meters. So that's just less than a mile. Mm. And I ran three minutes, 46 seconds, 0.39. Oh my. So I was about 0.39 seconds over the standard. So I missed the standard. Um, and that's my age group right now. And I've come through the ranks gradually. Like I haven't like shot up, like I'm not on special. You know, I started at the bottom. But Olympics, so you can see where I'm, it's like it builds up. And mm. even from Europeans to Worlds to Olympics, the standards get higher and more difficult. Okay. So Olympics, you're looking at, you're definitely want to be around three minutes and 36 seconds wow. or 35 seconds. So about a good 10 seconds off um, mm. an Olympic standard, but I'm still only 22, so. And how, how long is the mileage? Like how, how many more years can you go, do you think? Um, well, they say you peak um, and then around 27 or 28, okay. so I'm only 22 at the minute, so if yeah. I can find a way to keep going Good. and to just do put everything towards it now that I'm young and now that I can do it, yeah. um, anything's possible. 
So can, what's uh, you're talking? It, it sounds like that's a, a goal you might try and hit. That would require mm. presumably a massive amount of commitment after college. Like thinking college, mm-hmm. it's good you have your structure and you're mm-hmm. kind of looked after in many ways. So what happens after for you? Like exactly. will you work and train, or, or how how is that going to work? Balancing all that. That is something I've seen with uh, American athletes, or not American, but just athletes in general and American colleges, is they get, they've been training so hard for those four or five years they spent in college, mm. and then they get to the other side and they're like, what the hell do I do now? Like, this was a huge part of my life, and now it's gone. So if you're lucky enough to get up to those sort of standards where you can, someone will pay for you, or you get sponsored or something like that, but that's only a very little amount of people. Okay. So you really have to like work a job or you're trying to get a master's or something. But mm. to be honest, I don't know. I'm just going with what I do now. I'm just training hard and getting the times down as far as I can mm. before I leave college, before my time is up. And I'll go from there and I'll see what happens. Like I have no plans. I talk to different people and stuff. Okay. And I have hopefully have options, but we'll see. Can you take me through a typical day of uh, of life in in Martin and training and eating and, and, and school and all. How do, you, mm-hmm. how do you pack that in? And I presume it's very structured. Uh, what, what's that all like? Mm-hmm. It is like, as you said, it's very structured and you really need to be on top of it or you won't get everything done. But as you know, like our, I went to college in Dublin for a year and it was really hectic. Like I had a lot of classes. So the classes here or in the States are not not as many, but they're still as sort of intense, you would say. So this is a typical day. I'll take you through like just a typical November day in the middle of cross country season. There's races coming up, but this is my off week. So we're really training hard. So we're up. I'm up at about 5.30, 5.15 out the door. We're training for six and the whole team's out there. So that's, that's really cool. Like having everyone out there that time of the morning, you're like, okay, you're tired, so is everyone else, let's go after it. Um, you do your session, you get back at about eight, get a bit of breakfast, um, then you're going to class at nine, and then you have classes from nine to about two, okay. and you have lunch in there at about 12 or so. Um, that's then, so if your workout in the morning was hard enough, you'd have an easy run in the afternoon, so you run at about day. three or so. Oh yeah, yeah. Wow. Um, yeah, you run, we, we do, we try and run because we have a lot of mileage to cover in a week. Wow. So we're out there and it is a lot hotter. Well, not maybe not November, but it gets hotter at three o'clock as the year progresses. In Alabama, it, it's it's bloody hot, I'm sure. Oh my, it's unbelievable. Like it anyway, makes Tennessee so look You have your run at three. Uh, I, sorry for interrupting you. Keep going. Mm. Yeah, we run again at three. Um, maybe some boys aren't there because they have labs or stuff like that, but they will be out there. They'll get out if it's an hour later, if it's an hour before, everyone gets their run done, like it doesn't matter. Mm. So then you finish that run, you get come back, get a shower, then you go for dinner. We normally go to the cafeteria and it's all on campus, pretty handy. Mm. And then from there, you normally go to the library and you're in the library till about eight or nine o'clock. And then if you have any free time that you want to spend with your girlfriend, your friend, that's the time to do it. Mm. So we don't even have that much because we're up again at six yeah. or before six. Oh, so good. I always try and be in bed for about nine thirty, ten, and then sleeping for ten thirty. Yeah, that's pretty. Mm-hmm. That's pretty. Uh, pretty full, I think it's fair to say. Uh, mm-hmm. That nearly keeps you. It keeps you more productive, doesn't it? Because you're you're not fat. Does. Any free time you have, you would have to. You've no choice but to use it wisely. Mm-hmm. It's a good. Mm-hmm. It teaches you well, I think, for for after college itself. Definitely. And all Definitely. That stuff. And I think it, even if you're going to later to employers and looking for a job and stuff, mm. and Americans know what it takes to be a college athlete. Mm. So if you walk in, I think you already have an advantage being an athlete because they know what it takes and it's not yeah. easy. No, it's it's no uh, cakewalk. I, it must be said that, that there is a huge uh, there's a a massive spectrum mm-hmm. between intensity and and uh, more relaxed programs, and you you would be at the higher level. That's worth pointing out. Not every athlete in America would be competing at your level. Well, see, our school is not large. It's not that big. 
mm. and our team we finished 15th in the region in cross country which is okay but you know we're not making it to nationals like we're not the big dogs like we're not up there with them but mm. the thing is is we go to the competitions with the big dogs so you go up against them wow. week in week out so you see where you really are mm. so i think that's really cool we're not a huge school we're competitive but we put ourselves up against the best and division one and division two like it's the big dogs of, of division one i presume you're running oh with. yes yeah. and uh mm. i personally was division two and and there is a difference mm. <laughs> obviously but but uh no it, it's it's a big difference talk to me about your team atmosphere i know i i was very lucky i was on a very uh a very cohesive team i suppose i'd say mm -hmm. and I know that some places the coach can be and not uh, the team can be very, very selfish. Some players, some older guys. Yeah. And, and then you, you have the problem. Some younger guys have no interest in, in playing for the team. They, they're a little bit immature mm -hmm. and they might be, they might miss their mother. And mm -hmm. there's so many things that go into the, the whole character of an athlete and it's very, very difficult, I think, to have everyone on the same page. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot going on there. So mm -hmm. how has that been? Firstly, at, at West Alabama, what was the team atmosphere like? And now at, at University of Tennessee, Martin. Do you say at Martin or, or UT Martin? How do you abbreviate that? You can say you can say I have UT Martin on here, but you hey. can say at Martin. Like, all right. It's all the same. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So tell me about the, the team, specifically that, that social athletic dynamic like is there are you guys competing really again you know what i mean what, what's that all like mm -hmm. yeah so running is a very interesting sport because you, no matter what you're doing you're always competing against everyone there it's very rarely are you part of the team like really stuff like that but mm -hmm. not a lot so like going up in rural donegal i had a few teammates here and there but there was never a collective team that stuck together Okay. So um, going over, I really underestimated the power that a team has on wow. influencing each other and influencing me and stuff. And it took a while to get used to. Like we had a few, we had a few guys from Kenya on the team, and then obviously a lot of Americans, and they're from all over America, and just a lot of different backgrounds and ideas and beliefs. Mm -hmm. And just to see how the team pulls together sometimes is really good. You know, like just how diversity mixes. Mm -hmm. But um, my team, my team at West Alabama was more diverse. I will say that, and we got on. It was very interesting. Oh. Like there's, there's always something happening. You know, mm. like it's never calm. But I think if you're, for me, I loved being a sort of a leader to my Gaelic like, and soccer teams. So I kind of stepped up and became a leader, and it kind of showed me more of who I am as a person, mm. and just pulling boys together because we're out there hurting. Every mm. single day, and I'm sure it's the same with your sport with tennis and stuff. Not like, like you're right there. <laughs> no. I know, but like you're right Go there on. in the bake and heat, and yeah, like yeah. you're <laughs> trying to pull each other together. And you know, it's like we're out here every day. Like there's no need for us to be bicker, and there's no need for us to be trying to be competitive with each other. Like we are a team, mm. and to get that into some boys' heads, like as you said, is difficult than more than others. And then bringing in new boys, and maybe in high school they were like the top dog. Mm. But they come in here and there's like, you're not even the top in the team, but there's a whole division out there that's better than you as well. Mm. And it takes them a while to wrap their heads around that. But changing then teams was, I didn't expect it to be that difficult. Like leaving my teammates at West Alabama, I thought, you know, they're my friends, you know, they're teammates. I won't miss them that much. And you, you do like it's, you don't really? realize how much you, you become connected with them. But this new team now, we're just as good, you know, like we're... Really? getting on and yeah it's that's good i really enjoy the the team aspect of american sports you you mentioned uh different beliefs and i personally i've had two years just a little anecdote i've had two years now at uh, a school in the upstate of south carolina and mm -hmm. i did one season uh i would have been literally minutes behind you but i did one season across country there and uh yes. One the first race we did, the lads all came together before the race to say the mm. Our Father, and you know well uh, Ireland's Catholic history, mm. uh, but that never would happen on a on a Gaelic football mm. pitch. Not a, mm. I really, 
like yeah maybe like I, I i don't i cannot see that happening and and yeah uh same on a on a tennis court over here it's it's become apparent to me that it's there actually is a bit more of that in the south than i would have mm. been apparent. but the fact that it's so uh i would say out loud it's very explicit mm. the, the Extremely. down south uh so they are father before the race everyone came and huddled i i was just yeah. It was striking. So, have you had yeah. any experiences like that? When you you said beliefs, and that struck mm-hmm. me. So, what did you mean by that? Mm-hmm. Even that, like you said, I didn't even know you ran cross country. That's mm-hmm. that's impressive, especially not, not well. Those southern states were so hot. Ah, still though. Yeah. Still, it's it's not easy. No. But yeah. Um. But yeah, that was one of the things. Like I was. Yeah. Like. Grew up Catholic here, went through everything in, se- in primary school, secondary school, done all that. And that would be the last thing mm. I would think of to do before race. And I don't know, it kind of just, it brought a different aspect to athletics. You know, it's like you didn't really, maybe you might say we pray to God before you start a race or something. But having the whole team yeah. saying it out loud in front of each other, you know, it was yeah. kind of, it was different. And then that made me think, you know, what if... What Sorry, did that happen on your here? team as well? Did you have the same thing? Oh yeah, almost every team, every team I'm in. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's and that's even nice. if it's a really team, if it's just four of us, you know, and because cross country is bigger, if there's just four of us, they'll they'll always still yeah. take a prayer. Yeah. yeah. That was, and then I was sitting thinking, you know, like what if these boys don't believe in this or whatever? And but it's just I don't know. It was just maybe it wasn't. The fact we were saying something is that we were in the huddle and everyone was kind of just in that moment as well. That was you. something I'd never experienced with athletics. But I know what you mean. A lot, yeah. But mainly, like, the different personalities too. Mm. That's a huge thing in the, yeah. in the teams. No, it's, it's mm-hmm. certainly... It wouldn't... On our tennis team now, it's worth pointing out, uh, we had one American and about 15 foreigners. So it wasn't... <laughs> you could, like... Simply put, it wasn't as religiously homogenous as yeah. <laughs> where uh, you can assume if, if anyone has any any religious uh, inclinations, it'd be uh, southern something southern basically something American yeah. something Christian. Where with uh, like we had a Venezuelan, a couple of French lads, a few Canadians, a, a few Scandinavians, mm. and there's you'd never would have considered doing something in, in that kind of team. So. Yeah. That highlights one point for me. The difference between different experiences in America. Mm-hmm. You're there in in Martin. Uh, you might know a fella in Boston. I was in South Carolina, and and it's kind of. I think there's this kind of brush painted in Ireland. Oh, he he's in America, and and that's all you know, really. Mm-hmm. So the reality is that there's. There's millions of different experiences you can have within America, mm-hmm. just one blanket experience. So can you tell me a little bit about your view on the, the actual diversity of this country and, and different perspectives that you've seen? So mm-hmm. I'll, I'll give you an example. Right now, I am in Connecticut, where yeah. uh, there's the trees and there's mansions and there's country clubs and uh it's 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 just a lot of money and and you'd have typically people voting for democrats and mm-hmm. that kind of thing i was in mm-hmm. south carolina where uh it's a lot of highways and fields and you have traders on the side of the road and you have pickup trucks and you have a lot of fast food chains mm-hmm. and you don't have many uh, espresso cafe shops right yeah so, so that's just two very, very different things. So do you have any comparison like that that you have seen firsthand in the States? Mm-hmm. Well, I think, like you said, you could come up with a million examples. Mm. And they're probably two extremes because I've never been to Connecticut, but I spent a lot of time in the South. Mm. And I spent some time up around the North and everything like that as well. But I think with, with athletes, like we get so caught up in our sport and school and getting grades and hitting times or mm-hmm. winning matches, whatever it is, yeah. that we actually forget that we're experiencing things that 
not a lot of people can ever say they can because we have a visa for about four or five years mm. and we can stay in the states that whole entire time mm. and just the things i've seen and went and i've been to i just hit my 21st state before i came back so i'm almost at halfway yeah. and just like the amount of places i've seen and the people i've met and athletics is for now and college is obviously if you get a degree and you work in that field it is for life but if it's not then the whole experience that we've had i think is worth more than ever anything else put together like how i've i know i have and i'm sure yourself you've become a lot more like open-minded absolutely and like your horizons have broadened and uh, not just a sporting sphere but in other spheres also yeah and like you've met people like i know i have a girlfriend i think you might have one yeah. as well at the moment yeah. If you, yeah so and like it's just the different things that you do is just mm. people but you can't explain a lot of stuff to people like you can explain what you just said mm. stereotypes like you, that's what they like to hear exactly but they're not the ones here no experiences or they're experiencing themselves yeah no that's a good <laughs> that's a good point so Oshin, i asked you a little bit about your plans after college and they're not crystal clear because uh, it, a lot depends on how your athletics actually go. So mm -hmm. like if you do well, you might do this and, and if you get injured, you might do that. So more broadly speaking, can you see yourself living long term in the States or is that are you too close to close to home? Like is your heart mm -hmm. in Bally Buffet? <laughs> I think my heart will always be here in Bally Buffet in Ireland. It mm -hmm. always will be like there's nothing will ever change that but i think right now when there's not a lot of strings being attached you know i'm still free and young and there's a lot going on there's no better place to be i think than america like the land of opportunity because if you know the right people if you do the right hard work mm -hmm. then there's the amount of opportunities over there is endless yeah um of course there's a lot of places like there you can be in the middle of a desert you can be in the countryside or you can be stuck in a city like chicago or new york or wherever you want to be um but i'm yet to find the place where i'm like you know what this is actually mm. this is where i want to spend my time if i was to be here this is home. So i'm just like i'm just trying to because there are, you know yourself there's so many different places mm. absolutely mm. it's funny what, mm. it's funny what you say about if you know the right people and i think it's worth pointing out you might have a different view on this, but in America, it doesn't really matter. Obviously, money is a big thing, right? Mm. Uh, the people in New York City have a lot of money compared to uh, probably the people in Alabama, right? But mm -hmm. there really isn't a, a class structure at all where you're, you went to this school uh, in secondary school and uh, your father is this fella and your, your mother no this no at all i i really mm -hmm. think it's those things are in many ways stripped away yeah obviously knowing people mm -hmm. helps right but mm -hmm. there is an incredible opportunity to start fresh and and prove yourself on your own merits mm -hmm. i think in america uh again some people have advantages that others don't but mm -hmm. you could land in in new york city as Oshin who knows no one in New York, but you've done this and that, and you can tell people, and, and they kind of give you a hearing. Where mm. I think in Ireland, like, you're from Donegal, the other side of Ireland than me, but but we know people in Donegal, and, and you know people in Dublin. Like, you can't yeah. really, you can't really start again completely with a mm. blank slate. Like, if you were yeah. to screw up uh, in in new york you can move to, to alabama you know mm -hmm. do you have any thoughts on on that opportunity can you elaborate a little bit there's this term thrown around the land of opportunity but mm. do you do you fully buy that or, or do you have any perspective on that mm -hmm. well see it's all about i believe i really do believe it's all about it's all about it's better to know it's like who you know is better than what you know Mm. And I think the better people, the amount of people you get to meet that are in the places that are kind of helpful to you, it's a bit selfish, but know people that will help you and stuff like that. 
Mm. I think it's far more important than what you've done and like your grades and stuff like that. I think it's more down to the person. And like I've talked to uh, bosses, to managers, to people hiring people. And in the real world, a degree is helpful. It is, of course. Mm. But it's all about the person yourself. And as you said, like you can move over and like you might be common here. Like I could be common for a person from Donegal. Mm. But I go over there and I'm unique. Mm. and I'm different and people want to get to know you and people would even want to start hiring you yeah. or whatever you know and like there's a lot of opportunity because we think we're so enclosed here and maybe we are maybe that's just the way it is but if we go somewhere else we're completely different we might think we're normal but to them we're so exotic and we're different yeah. and I think that's something really cool and if you know how to play on it properly mm. you can you can do a lot of things but a lot of it's just down to work ethic. Mm. Like you just need to be willing to work. And like you, you're working six days a week in the mm. bacon hot mm. Connecticut summer. Like that, that's not easy. But that, even no. though you're making money, it might be huge. Mm. The people you're meeting and the the places you're seeing and the things you're doing, like that will stand to you in the future. Yeah. Like because then you go into a job that's maybe just a wee bit easier, but you're earning a wee bit more money, say, and you're like, I just worked the whole summer up in the mm. bacon heat busting my ass like this isn't too bad i can work this <laughs> extra few hours and yeah. i think because because we're over there and we feel like we owe something to our parents maybe or to the people giving us this money that we're not going to let this opportunity fade away and we're mm -hmm. going to do everything we can so yeah i think you have to you have to do it the right way of course and as as an irish person you're right you are exotic you're that bit more it's actually very advantageous obviously immigrants there's uh some immigrants aren't treated very nicely but we we mm -hmm. get we get the best of both i think like mm -hmm. no one's really right. gonna, no one's going to discriminate against uh against one of us and maybe that's maybe if, if we had a different color skin it might be different mm -hmm. no i i can't i i haven't seen that experience but it's mm -hmm. amazing how helpful people can be if you mm -hmm. display that bit of work ethic and an openness that mm -hmm. really goes a long way here but it comes down yeah. to you is is kind of the summary of what you're saying is that fair to say yeah you definitely and not a sheet of paper or or your your father's uh yes think, your father's the the president of the ga club so so we'll exactly. get out here and um mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what i mean yeah no it's it's a funny exactly. uh, it's it's a funny position that Irish people hold in in America, mm. and a lot of them. Yeah, and I think incredibly. I think to, to, yes, and to take the opportunity like we did, and to take that risk because it is a risk. You don't know what's going to happen when you get on that first plane to America, and you don't know what the hell college you're going to. We don't do college yeah. visits. I definitely didn't. No, I didn't. You know, we we take this jump, mm. and I think people understand that and respect it. Yeah, that you're thinking like we're whatever how many thousand miles from home mm. and we're doing what we can to make it work and if you're successful then you're successful if you're not you're not it's not for some people mm. um it's, it's people just aren't built for it but i think if you are and if you even have like if you just if you think you can do it but you don't know how you just there's no one's going to help you like you just have to go out and do it yourself and i think that's that really stands to someone yeah it's not there in many people's heads yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you think Definitely. it's more? Um, I think. Or is it up to the person? I think it should be. It is a lot. It is down to the person because you could tell people, "Oh, go to America is the best thing ever," but they could crack, buckle under pressure, waste a good bit of money. You know, like it really is. It takes a lot for a person to make that step. Mm. Um, you don't want to force people. Of course, you don't want to force people into doing something that they don't even want to do. Mm. Uh, they're, they're not ready for because you really need to be ready for it like i was i don't know i was 19 when i came over what age were you when you came i was 18 you would have you'd have a bit more maturity i suppose yeah when mm. you get on that plane mm -hmm. like and then then few years after leaving cert done me the world of good i don't know if i would have made it if i had left straight after leaving cert because i'd done a year in dcu and it got me used to being away from home like i took steps that i didn't even know i was taking yeah. at the same time and a lot of it that I'm here is just pure fluke, pure luck. I don't know what you're going to call it, mm. but I think it is such an opportunity that I wouldn't, 
I would obviously recommend it to like there's boys there is boys in my club now and my coach has me my coach in America he has me um trying to recruit <laughs> a lot of people back home he says like any the girls coming up through secondary school that you see that have potential or wow. even boys in my club and stuff I get on to them but you get the same reactions it's like like you, you tell them all the stories and they're really into it and they're like but what would you would you like to do that and they're like you know like mm. I don't know, that's a huge step. What about my parents? You know, what about this and that? And I don't know. I, I think it takes it takes a type of person. Mm. It's not like if you don't go to America, you're going to starve on the side of the road. So mm. that's the thing. It's 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 like you're already in, in a good part of the world. And uh, and and but, but taking for, like risk, taking that risk is is mm. unnecessary, really. You know what I mean? But you say like you're not missing out, but what what the the level of competition mm. in America and in the NCAA is second to none for mm. our age and the whole entire world. Like you're not going to get that competition anywhere in Ireland. No, and that's one of the main things that drew me over. Also, was the like I'm here. Maybe I might be whatever place in Ireland, but I go over to America and I'm absolutely nobody. And that's where you progress and get better. It's funny, you have the, to... it's funny, the first thing you talk about, and, and this isn't just me and you ourselves have very different, we're coming from a different place. Like I'm not looking at it really fully seriously fr from an athletic standpoint. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. If I was in Ireland, I don't think I'd be playing serious sport. And if I was, uh, I'd love to play serious get a cup up. And that clearly mm. has nothing to do with, with coming to America. Yeah. I, I think if if I wasn't in America, I wouldn't be playing tennis really. So yeah. it's funny you 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 came to America for the for the running and for me mm. I'm playing tennis so that I can be in America. That's the way I've yeah. summed it up to many people. Yeah. We're supposed to show the two of us we're both in America and we, we met in Atlanta Airport, but we're coming from completely different completely different backgrounds yeah within ireland and within uh within the states itself and 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 it's amazing uh, how mm -hmm. how much how how wide a range of experience there is in america mm -hmm. and that's basically what i wanted to to explore uh and to share uh, and to get your your view on that and mm -hmm. uh, has been has been very interesting. I, I, I learned a lot just mm -hmm. this what, 30 minute conversation with you, you know, um, mm -hmm. so, so thank you for doing that. And, and mm -hmm. it's, it's now I have my clock in the corner of my screen here, right? And it says 1106, 2307. So I have my, my laptop is still in Irish time. So <laughs> <laughs> you're right. You're not. That's the exact time. here. So yet. you're staying up late and um, having a chat here. So so thanks a million for that. Just to to conclude, if you had one message to sum up in, let's say, under 30 seconds or a minute, maybe, you're obviously, you must know times very well in your head, by the way, as a, <laughs> but uh, yeah. what's your message for an, a young Irish book or, or a girl like yourself, might be a runner, any, any athlete that is kind of at the back of their head is America. Uh, what's your message to that person? All right, so I have a space time around roughly 200 meters in here. So, mm -hmm. um, to them, to anyone that's even thinking about it, it would be there's no one's going to hold your hand. There's no one's going to help you through this process. It's going to be all down to you. Of course, you need the support of your parents and money and stuff, but it's going to be down to you if you want to do it and to take this step. And I would say, why not? like give it a go what's the worst thing that can happen like you're you're a cliche but you're only young once and mm -hmm. you may as well go for it see what you're made of if it's not for you then at least you tried it and you're not going to regret it like that man who i talked to all those years ago and i'll tell you from me from my experience i have not regretted one second of it yeah and, and nor have i i i am um, i'm incredibly glad i did this and mm -hmm. the longer i've spent here the more glad I've been that I came, you know. At the start, mm -hmm. you kind of struggled, and, and I, I wasn't mad about it at the start, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but you kind of go into it in many ways. And not everyone, but 
But I think if you're open to it, uh, you'll be flying here. As an Irish person in particular, that it's a special. Um, you're coming from a special place, and you're going to to a special land. Yeah. Oshin O'Gallin, future uh, and present Irish athlete at the top of the <laughs> at the top of the Irish running scene. Thank you very much for doing this. I really appreciate you it. Do, Kane. And Thank I you wish, very much. For I wish you the very, very best luck um, with your summer competition and mm -hmm. your uh, your your college career. But but more more than that, who knows what happens after? Um, exactly. Who knows? So so good luck with all that. I'll be following Thank you. Very much. And the same to yourself. My best of luck with your future endeavors because. You're definitely going to do something special, or I know it. Maybe, maybe so, not playing sports now. <laughs> but, uh, something, something. <laughs> talking nonsense, maybe. Right, Oshin, you're with me to meet him, Margaret. Slam Tamil. I thought you wrote.